Welcome to our talk. Our work is about adversarial thinking. What does that even mean? If you look around, you'll find lots of people saying things like thinking like a hacker or calling it a security mindset. These are pretty problematic as definitions. We discuss why in the paper, but they may be useful intuitions. Instead, we like something we read in several ACM and IEEE curricula, which is this, a thinking process that considers the potential actions of the opposing force working against the desired result. Phew, that's a mouthful. But we like that it's much broader than just computer security. We think this is important because we believe similar processes can apply and are useful in several other areas of computer science, like thinking about the bad consequences of machine learning, anticipating problems in user interface, or, or for that matter, even in designing test cases. Now, wait a minute. Security, machine learning, formal methods. Is adversarial thinking only an advanced computer science skill beyond the range of beginners? We didn't think so, but that's what we set out to study. Our feeling was that even beginning students can engage in it at some level, revisiting it over the years as they learn more computing. Concretely, we set out to study three questions. The precise wording is in the paper, but loosely we wanted to know, what kinds of adversarial thinking can we expect students to exhibit? Specifically, we were curious whether they can meaningfully talk about systems that are well beyond their technical sophistication or is knowledge of technology necessary. We also wanted to know whether students focus more on technical or social issues. We did this in the context of an accelerated introductory course, so about two-thirds had prior programming experience and about a third did not. There are a lot more details in the paper. Our context is a department-wide initiative at Brown that we call Responsible Computer Science. This is our take on ethics, but much broader, so a topic like adversarial thinking fits comfortably. In the course, all work is done in projects. Most of the projects were given an accompanying computing and society component. There was either a reading or video that related to the topic of the project. Students were then asked to reflect on what they had seen. Here are three examples. On a project about document similarity, we asked students to read a nature paper on the problems with plagiarism detection. They were then asked to use an online detector tweaking inputs to see ways in which the detector does and doesn't work, and then reflect on what they saw. On a project about collaborative filtering, we gave them a Wired article about a mock dating app for monsters. The app was designed to expose algorithmic biases in a playful and impersonal setting. Students were then asked to think about how similar data aggregation can create problems in other domains. Third example. Students were asked to implement search functionality over different tweet-like data structures. They were then asked to read Dana Boyd's stunning article about YouTube search and its impact on society. Students were then asked to create pairs of very similar YouTube queries that one would expect to produce largely similar results, but actually produced very different ones. Back to the research. We did several iterations over portions of the student responses to construct a rubric with high intercoder reliability. We use these to then analyze all the student responses. At a high level, here's what we found. Students can do several kinds of adversarial thinking. However, we also saw some gaps in things they didn't discuss. Students can talk meaningfully about systems that are well beyond their technical sophistication. Finally, we found that students primarily focus on social issues. In a way, this is good because there isn't a lot of technological overconfidence. Here are some higher level issues. We found some evidence of lack of transfer and students were definitely tiring by the end of the semester. We think that there is great evidence in this work of Jerome Bruner's concept of readiness for learning, that we can meaningfully engage even early stage students in adversarial thinking. It would be exciting to try this with even younger students. Finally, we think there may be very positive diversity consequences here. Students whose background makes them feel like they don't identify with conventional computing may do very well on these kinds of activities, making them feel both valued and accomplished. Just to give you a feel for student responses, here are some interesting examples. On plagiarism detection, a student observes the disconnect between the concept of plagiarism, which is about ideas, and the mechanics of software, which is about common words. 
on collaborative filtering, a student reflects on the self-reinforcing cycle of the meme economy on Instagram. On search, a student points to dramatically different search results in YouTube, depending on whether a person searches for Donald Trump or Donald J. Trump. You can see that clearly here. Both searches were made using private browsing mode. Finally, we think the paper also has useful content for educators. Remember those three sample tasks? There's a whole table of these in the paper. To be honest, we're very pleased with the collection of materials and questions, and in end of semester anonymous surveys, the students, who had little incentive to lie and were generally quite blunt, said they really appreciated most of these and got a lot out of them. You should consider stealing several of these. Thank you for listening.